you can feel, you know, when something something's going on because that day I was like, I wake up around 4.30 in the morning, you know. I sang, I sang a message, you know, hey, are you ready? He never answered me. I start like tuning around the blocks where he used to live, you know, and I saw one of the guy and, and I asked, hey, you know where's some military? They told me, you know, okay, if he get killed by the police, you know. Well, the police story is that Amakar lunged at him with his knife. Our witnesses say, no, Amakar, in fact, was walking away towards his home. When the police grabbed him from behind, he wiggled away from them and ran into the street, dropped his knife, the police shot. That's the major discrepancy. That one? He was really, really good guy. He just came to this country to war, you know. His family is really poor, you know, in Guatemala. All his idea was uh, make some money, you know, and send, send back to his family, you know, to, so they can have a better life. The victim turned and saw the suspect. The uh, victim refused to sell his bicycle at which point he turned and saw the suspect charging at him with the knife raised overhead. The The autopsy was done sometime after the shooting. All the shots were in the back of his body. Four to the back, one to the arm, one to the back of his head. He was obviously fleeing from the scene. He wasn't lunging at the cops, anything of the sort. When the suspect charged at one of the officers with the knife raised overhead, both officers discharged their firearms, one firing once, one firing five times. They struck the suspect. Uh, the suspect did not survive the situation. It's hard to trust police right now in our community. I mean, God, he, he was a, a young brown man, you know, and there's just a, a, a disconnect between how police police our communities and how they police other communities in our city. It just makes it more contentious bet between the community and the police. These town halls should be used for us to organize ourselves against the corrupt San Francisco Police Department. I encourage you to turn your backs on these people. They, are, they do not care about just for, justice for Latinos. They do not care about just for, justice for immigrants. He didn't realize they were police. When they tried to grab him, he got away. He got him, he was standing between two cars here on the street. They told him to drop the knife. He dropped the knife. The police were And they shot him. So uh, I wasn't out there Thursday night when this happened, but um, I worked with this guy for two years. I employed him. Um, very hardworking Latino guy. Um, it just doesn't make sense what I'm hearing. The fact I feel like he was a very dependable employee, uh, mild mannered, um, never gotten any uh, confrontations, and um, yeah, it was. That's what made this whole thing kind of surprising. When the coroner had called me to identify him, as he was describing the person he had in the uh, coroner's office to me on the phone, he's like this really small, looks like a, a boy. So like the idea that he's lunging, it just didn't make sense. Amikar's death was definitely a tragedy. And what's gonna happen the next time this happens? When someone else get killed in a community by police, you know, what's gonna be the excuse then? My eyes were watering. Um, he kind of pushed me over the metal pile and pushed his hands into my eyes. 
um, while he was sitting on me. They were kind of throwing fake punches at me, so I would hit myself. Like, you know, when I flinched, I would hit the back of my head or something. 